Okay, and welcome to the first tutorial on ellipses. The first tutorial is going to look at graphing an ellipse from standard form. But before we begin with that, let's go ahead and get this main sheet out with all of our conic sections. This time we're filling out our third row here, and we're talking about a cone. It's a conic section, a section of a cone. This time what we're going to do with our cone is we're going to slice the cone with the plane through both sides of the cone. Not parallel like the circle, but rather just at a little bit of a slant, or a lot of bit of a slant, and we're going to slice through still both sides of the cone. And if you do that, the two-dimensional figure that you're cutting out is a stretched circle that we call an ellipse. We've got two different types of ellipses. We've got horizontal ellipses. That's like an egg on its head, excuse me, on its side. And we've got vertical ellipses. That's like an egg on its head. So we have two different standard forms. The first standard form for the horizontal one is x minus h quantity squared divided by a squared plus y minus k quantity squared divided by b squared all equal to 1. That's your horizontal ellipse. The um, vertical ellipse it looks very similar, x minus h quantity squared, but this time divided by b squared plus y minus k quantity squared divided by a squared, all equal to 1. So it sort of looks like a circle uh, in terms of its two quantities that are being squared with the plus sign in the middle, but what's different between the circle and the ellipse is the denominators of our two quadratic terms are different numbers. a squared and b squared are not the same. If they are the same, then we would actually have a circle, um, but when they're not the same, then we have a stretched circle. So we'll look at a little bit more at the standard forms when we get to the specific lesson. Applications of ellipses, you might think of orbits, the planets are orbiting um, the, the sun in an elliptical pattern. You might actually think of an, an elliptical machine in, um, in the gym, an elliptical machine. Okay. Um, there's also something that's kind of neat, it's called a whispering chamber. You might have learned this in your um, social science class, um, what a whispering chamber or the whispering galleries are. We'll talk about that on the next page as well. But these are some of the applications of ellipses. Okay, so let's look at the definition of ellipse. We're in section 9.3, the first half of that. The definition of an ellipse, an ellipse is the set of all points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points called foci is constant. So we construct our ellipse um, from two different focal points. Each one is called a focus, so together the plural of focus is foci. So we've got a lot of different parts of our ellipse that we want to know. First is the point right here in the center, and that is called the center. We've already labeled, or we've already, we already know that each of these is a focal point. They're foci together, so each one is called a focus. So here's one of the foci, and here's another one of the foci. Focus, or focal point. We have two axes, um, and they are connected uh, across the length of the ellipse and the height of the ellipse. The point on the ellipse that is that are the endpoints of each of these axes, or at least of this axis, these are called your vertices. So this is a vertex, and this is another vertex. And the segment that connects those two vertices, since it's the longest axis, or the longer axis, it's called the major axis. We have two co-vertices, which in this case are going up and down. They're on the ellipse as well. This is called a co-vertex, and this is the other co-vertex. And the segment that connects those two co-vertices, since it's a tinier um, 
uh, axis, we call that the minor axis. I'll put this in lowercase. Called the minor axis because it's a shorter distance. These are all of the parts of our ellipse that we're going to need to know. Most of them are ordered pairs. Two of them are lengths of axes. Okay, so let's mo look more specifically at the horizontal ellipse. The horizontal ellipse, we know that a squared is going to be bigger than b squared. So the denominator of the x squared term is going to be bigger than the denominator of the y squared term. That's what's going to force this uh, ellipse to stretch along the x direction. This is the horizontal direction. Okay, so a squared is less than b squared. Great. So let's look at the um, relationship between all of these points. Right here, of course, we have our center, and you know that the center is, of course, going to be the point HK. So H, again, is coming from the X coordinates, or from the X uh, parentheses. K is coming from the Y parentheses. So here's our center. Um, I'm not going to label it center. I'm going to label it as uh, HK. OK, there's our center. OK, once we know the value of A, and A, of course, is the square root of whatever this denominator is, once we know the value of A, we're going to count A units to the right and A units to the left to get to our two vertices. So this is A units. Once we know what A is, we're going to count A units to the right, A units to the left, and we're going to have our vertices. Our vertices, therefore, are ordered pairs. They're going to look like this. There's two of them. I guess I'll put both of them. OK, I don't know what the numbers are yet, of course. So that's what A does. A stretches with the x because A is underneath the x. When we find B, B is the, um, the square root of B squared, of course. And that since that goes with the y, it makes sense that we'd be counting up and down with the y. That's what B is going to do. So once we know what B is, from the center, we're going to count up to a covertex and down to our other covertex. So this is exactly B units. Okay, so A goes with the x direction, B goes with the y direction, because that's where those letters are um, underneath. Okay, so our covertices are also two ordered pairs, so they'll look like this. Now we have our foci. Our foci are right here and here, and those distances is what C will be. So we'll count C units from the center out to this focus and C units to get to this focus. Now you might say, well, where is C? I don't see that in the standard form. Well, we do need to know the relationship between C, A, and B. C will always be the square root of A squared minus B squared. So that's the relationship where uh, this is how we're going to find C. We take A squared, which is the this denominator, B squared, which is this denominator, subtract them and then take the square root. Sometimes c is a nice integer, or excuse me, a whole number. Sometimes c um, might be an irrational number, and that's fine. It's just an approximation. So that's how we get to the foci. So that means that the foci are also ordered pairs. So we'll fill those in. When we're talking about the major axis and the minor axis, the major axis The major axis is a length. It's the length of this long axis right here. Since it was A units to get to this side and A units to this side, it makes sense that the whole thing would be two A units. The minor axis is basically the height of this, parab of this uh, ellipse. <laughs> um, it takes B units to go up and B units to go down, so that means that it would be B, two B units high. So the minor axis. is 2b units. So that's how you find all of the stuff. It's important to understand this relationship. We need to find a, b, and c, and count those distances away from our center, which of course is the most important point to find. So let's actually put in some numbers and graph our first horizontal ellipse. 
So here's our first horizontal ellipse. First of all, we need to know that this is indeed an ellipse. I see that both terms are being squared. There's an x squared and there's a y squared, which means it's either an ellipse or a circle, since that means that that's what we've already studied. We don't know anything about a hyperbola yet. Since there's a plus sign in the middle, that means that it's either going to be a circle or an ellipse. I know that the denominators are different, therefore it cannot be a circle. This must be an ellipse. And since this denominator underneath the x is bigger than this denominator, this must be a horizontal ellipse. So let's first find the center. The center is h is 2, k is negative 3, so here's 2, negative 3. I'm going to plot things as I go, so 2, negative 3 will be my center. Next, I like to go to my vertices and my covertices, but I'm going to need to figure out what a is. a is the square root of 25, so it makes sense that a is 5. So my vertices are going to be five units away in the horizontal direction from my center. So let's count that out. One, two, three, four, five to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Those are my two vertices. So let's actually count them out. Here's zero, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, negative three. So seven, negative three. And the other one is one, two, three, negative three, negative three. So I got my two vertices. My covertices, I need to know what b is. And b is the square root of 9, so therefore b is 3. So my covertices, I'm just going to label that with a cv. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's going to be up and down 3 from my center. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So here are my two covertices. 2, 0, and 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6. So 2, 0 and 2, negative 6. I can go ahead and connect my ellipse since I've got the four points that I need. It's a nice curve. Again, it'll be better with a little bit of practice. OK, that's not too bad. The only other things I need to look for are my major axis. Ah, maybe I label that as M, big capital M, capital A for major axis. Okay, I need the length of that. You can just either count it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or just understand that it's 2 times A. So since A is 5, my major axis is 10 units long. My minor axis, maybe a little M and a little A, is you can count that out again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or you can realize that it's twice B. So that is um, 6. Oh, I did forget something, didn't I? Forget the foci? Oh, boy. Let's go and find the foci. I know that the foci are somewhere on this major axis. I need to figure out what c is. So therefore, c is the square root of a squared minus b squared. So c is the square root of a squared is 25, b squared is 9, so 25 minus 9. So c is the square root of 16. And this is nice that c is a nice number of 4. So I'm going to take that 4, and I'm going to count left and right. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's one focal point. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's the other focal point, and that is a complete picture. Let's label those these fo fo uh, foci. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, negative 3. I'll label that as F. Uh, what did I say? 6, negative 3. And this one is negative 2, negative 3. Probably should have done the foci before I did the axes, so, but that's fine. So there's a horizontal ellipse. Let's keep going. Let's now look at the vertical ellipse. Everything is basically the same. The only difference is now a squared is underneath the y. So since the bigger number is going to be underneath the y, it's going to stretch in the y direction. Everything else is going to be exactly the same relationship. a squared is still greater than b squared, which forces this to be a vertical. c will still be the square root of a squared minus b squared. That's why a squared always has to be bigger because otherwise if you subtract this the wrong way, you'll get a negative, and that's imaginary. That's no good. So we still have our center. Our center is still hk. h is still with the x, k is still with the y. Here's my center, here's hk. 
This time, A is going to be counting up and down. A units up to get to that vertex. A units down to get to this vertex, A and A. But my vertices will still be two ordered pairs. I'll find those. My co-vertices, which will also be two ordered pairs, those come from what the value of B is. And this time, we're counting left and right. So B will get us to this co-vertex. B will get us to this co-vertex. So there is B and B. And the foci come from, comes from the value of C. Once I figure out what the value of C is, I'm going to count C units to this focus and C units to this focus. And the focus, of course, is two points as well, the foci. Let's see, what do we have? Major axis. Major axis is still going to be 2A units. The minor axis is still going to be 2B units. Let's graph one of these. And that will be the end of the tutorial. I know that this is an ellipse again because I see a plus sign in between two quadratic terms. And the denominators are not the same. So it's not a circle. It's an ellipse. Since the bigger denominator is with the y, I know that it's going to travel in the vertical direction like the y term, or like the y axis does. Let's find our center. Our center is negative 1, positive 3. So I'll graph that as I go. Negative 1, 3. Let's find our vertices, which means I need the value of A. A is equal to 7. So I'll count up and down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's just a little bit off the graph patch. That's fine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's count that. That's negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So we had negative 1, 10, and negative 1, negative 4. Those are my two vertices. My co-vertices, I need b. b is 5, square root of 25. So I'm going to count 5 units to the right and left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are my co-vertices. Let's count them out. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 3. And negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, 3. 4, 3, negative 6, 3. Let's get the foci. Remember to do that this time. C is going to be the square root of a squared minus b squared. C is going to be the square root of 49 minus 25. C is going to be the square root of 24. This obviously is not a perfect square, so to make it make sense, let's get an approximate for the square root of 24. And when you plug that into your calculator, it's approximately 4.9. So it's just a shade under 5. So that's fine. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then take away a little bit. Here's one of the focal points. And then 1, 2, 3, 4.9 would be about right there. Let's see if we can count those out. This is negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.9-ish. So negative 1, 7.9, just approximate. And the other one is negative 1, 1.9, negative 1.9, negative 1, negative 1.9. We can see where that is in space. OK. We've got our major axis. I'm going to do capital M, capital A. And that is 2 times this, so that's going to be 14, or you can count it out, 14 units. And the minor axis, I'll do little m, little a, is 2 times the b, or you can count it out, 10. We have all of the pieces. The only thing that's missing is making a nice picture of our ellipse. Thank you for watching this tutorial on how to graph vertical and horizontal ellipses. Bye-bye.